The M2 Pro Mac Mini is quite literally the ultimate bang for your buck in the world of computers. It's a $1,300 machine that can effortlessly handle editing high-res videos and lengthy podcasts, as well as any graphic design projects you can throw at it all at once. And if you're not looking for that much power, the regular M2 Mini model has got you covered, and that will only run you about $600. And I've seen them go as low as $500 with sales. If you're interested in pricing and availability, I will leave my affiliate link in the description. Check that always, because you'll find some pretty good deals there. Anyways, as a one-man show running this YouTube channel, I wear many hats in a typical week. I'm editing videos, recording audio, or you know, placing it for a podcast or something like that, I'm messing around with graphics, and researching topics for my future videos. I'm basically the creative professional stereotypes uh, that Apple showcases their promotional videos <laughs> rolled into one person. That's me. All I'm missing is the professional level coding and compiling uh, elements of the type of work that I do, but even that creeps into my workflow from time to time with my regular nine to five job that's outside of YouTube. Uh, I also don't do like professional level audio um, uh, engineering or you know sound processing or anything like that. So that is also missing from the stuff that I throw at the M2 Pro Mac Mini. After living and working with the M2 Pro Mac Mini for over two months now, I can confidently say that this is a supremely powerful machine that is perfect for independent creators, small businesses, and even schools and I dare say students because of its cost. If you're looking for a computer that can handle all of your creative needs, the M2 Pro Mac Mini is definitely the answer. With one caveat to that is that you have a monitor, your keyboard, and a mouse that you can bring to the, to the equation. Uh, if you start looking at other things like that, then the price can go up exponentially, but a lot of people out there already have a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse that they can just quickly c connect to this machine and get off and running. So what did I opt to build to order from Apple? I ordered the M2 Pro Mac Mini with the following specifications. So as apparent in this video, I went with the M2 Pro that has a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 core neural engine. And an extra cost on top of that would have got you an extra two CPU cores and three GPU cores. But in my opinion, I wouldn't go with that because I found success in just leaving this at the base model as it helps retain value during resale when it's time to get rid of the machine. Most folks don't care that you spent the extra money or an amount on beefing up the CPU. All they care about is saving some money on their end. And in the world of Apple, that is pretty significant because you can have a lot of jump up in just adding a little bit of CPU cores and GPU cores. I found the performance boost to be negligible in the type of work that I do, so it's just not worth it to me. It may be worth it to you, but I would say if you can save the $300, do so. I went with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and saved the extra $400 that would have ran me to upgrade to 32 gigabytes. This is where I would advise you to splurge a bit if you have the money. If you run a ton of tabs and keep a lot of apps open at once, then you're going to want to have this upgrade. However, I haven't noticed much, if any, of a performance lag in the work that I do on this machine, and I have a good amount of things going on at once with the 16 gigs of, of RAM. So um, this could go either way. Uh, I am going to recommend that if you have the extra money, splurge a bit and get the 32 gigabytes. I went with a one terabyte SSD. Although I'm aware of external storage options that are significantly cheaper than what Apple offers, I simply can't tolerate any lag when I'm editing my videos. And sometimes those drives introduce that uh, delay or it's in a different location and yada yada. Just takes up extra time that I'm not willing to, to offer up. And that's because I prefer to have a, my complete media asset library stored on device because it makes my editing experience just that much nicer. I do have to be proactive in keeping stuff clear on the drive and I think two terabytes would have been nice to have at this point in my YouTube career because I'm generating a lot of files. But that's 600 extra dollars and I'm not about that life right now. So I spent a little bit here and I went with the 10 gigabit ethernet. I have a fast internet connection and a home rack that I love connecting to very quickly. I need to upgrade my Synology setup to match the connection speed and this will allow me to do a lot more uh, in the realm of like uh, connecting to mass media and mass storage and sharing out uh, across different things in my home. Not only that, it was $100 well spent to future proof my machine in my opinion. I, I just, it's worth it. 100 bucks, do it. All right, specs out of the way, moving on to connectivity. Despite it being a small desktop in form factor, uh, and it's really light. The M2 Pro Mac Mini has a full desktop array of ports. There's a power, Ethernet, four Thunderbolt 4 USB C uh, ports that you only get two of these on the M2 Mini, so the base model only has two. 
an HDMI 2.1, there's two USB-A3 ports, and a headphone jack. Here's something to consider. Assuming you have a display, keyboard, and a mouse all wired, instead of a built-in like that on the MacBook Pro, you end up with roughly the same level of connectivity. The only thing that is missing here on the Mac Mini uh, is the SD card slot, uh, unlike that on the Mac Studio and MacBook Pro. Unfortunately, they didn't change anything about the Mac Mini. I really wish they would put an SD card slot on the front of this device and maybe one Thunderbolt 4 port on the front, even a USB-A, I mean, that would be extremely helpful. I don't think they're gonna do that, but I, it's something that I really wish that it had. Beauty of Thunderbolt 4 is that you can daisy chain them, which give you incredible versatility and room to grow because the four spare ports can power all kinds of accessories. My setup consists of an LG 32 UN80, which I got from Costco because it has the ergo stand. I have a Logitech MX Keys keyboard, the infamous Magic Mouse, a Universal Audio Arrow interface that powers my Tenoy 402 reveals that they no longer make, which makes me very sad, and my Sennheiser MK4 condenser mic, a CowDigit Ethernet hub, two Glyph storage devices, one of which is my Time Machine backup and the RAID is for media work. I will say that if I connect the RAID directly to the M2 Pro Mac Mini, the Apple Silicon functions differently and doesn't provide full throughput because of power limitations. So I take that and I connect it or daisy chain it off my Quad X and I double the speed there. And that brings me to my final thing, a Quad X for my mass media storage. And all of this coming together, I believe I've achieved a perfect balance with what my setup is. If you're interested in any of this, I'll try to leave it linked in the description below with, of course, affiliate links. And your support, if you shop through those, is extremely appreciated and highly appreciated. Thank you. Let's move on to some baseline benchmarking because um, we all work differently and uh, the way that I can normalize how this machine performs is that I'm gonna do the Geekbench test, a disk speed test, or maybe a Cinebench test. And then we'll talk through those results here now. In the interest of setting a baseline, I wanna use some pretty standard benchmarking applications to kind of give you an idea of what this system is capable of. First and foremost, we're gonna start off with Geekbench and this produces a pretty good result when it comes to the single core score. It's a really strong machine at, and it's giving around 2,600. Uh, score on the single core and the multi-core is absolutely phenomenal uh, just breaking 12,000 in the multi-core. I also wanted to do a little bit of uh, testing within Geekbench and provide you a metal score just so you can kind of get an idea of the graphics performance of this machine and that came in at a little over 69,000 and since I did metal we got to do OpenCL with uh, the Mac Mini, the M2 Pro Mac Mini and that produced a little over 43,000. Up next, I ran through Cinebench R23. This software does a pretty good job at stress testing the multi-core performance and the single core performance, but in the interest of time and because I'm screen recording this, I wanted to give you a good idea of what kind of scores you would re realize with this machine. So with the screen recorder running while this process was uh, executing, it gave me 11,600 161. I did uh, run this same test at the timed test where it would ping the CPU quite a bit and without anything in the background to see if there was a huge difference. And to my surprise, there wasn't because I was able to get 11,801. So that was a pretty interesting find on my part because I thought it would have done a significantly worse because it was capturing, you know, this was capturing the screen recording while that uh, benchmarking was being done. Um, the same thing happened with the single core score. I did the same process by which, you know, I went through the whole thing and just to see what kind of scores I was going to get with uh, the two. And with that, I got around on the screen here, you're gonna see a 1604 score. And with the, out the screen recording and no other apps running, I got 1615. So the differences are negligible here. And I would say that the M2 Pro Mac Mini does a good job at managing resources across 
the CPU and GPU. And just to give you an idea of how fast this uh, read and write speeds of the internal SSD are on this one terabyte model, uh, I, from what I understand, iFixit did a, a teardown of this machine and showed that there are, there are multiple NAND spots for uh, storage on the logic board of the M2 Pro Mac Mini, and you only get one with the 512, and if you go any more than that, you get double. So from my understanding, this is closer to double the speed of what you would get on the baseline uh, M2 Pro Mac Mini. It's producing a little over 6,000 megabytes per second write and a little over 5,000 in the read speed. So the, the performance is there. Again, now those are just some baseline examples. Let me tell you about the usage and how I am pleased with my M2 Pro Mac Mini when it comes to rendering out videos. This machine absolutely flies. It can handle anything you can throw at it. I can have Adobe Audition, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and even After Effects open all at once. Uh, is it the most efficient way to work? No, but it can handle it no problem. And this is with the 16 gigabyte of RAM that, uh, variant that I have here in this video. I can even sprinkle in a little bit of Final Cut Pro and it doesn't have a problem, it doesn't skip a beat. I love, love, love this machine and I think you will too. Not only will you love this machine, I think you'll get a lot of utility out of it. So the cost of entry is really low and you get a, a ton of performance off of it. So you could be a student, small business owner, um, just a hobbyist, a professional. This thing fits into the boxes really nicely and meets the needs of all of those people. And I think Apple did a really good job in designing this and building the, the chipset to support the demanding requirements that people like us have of their machines. The awesome part about all of this is that the machine never <laughs> makes a sound. I know it has a big ass fan in there, but it never makes a peep, even under heavy load. I, I wanna open it to make sure that Apple even put it in there, but it I never, ever, ever hear this thing. It's awesome, it's right there, front and center. I can have it, I can record audio, I can be processing audio, I can be rendering out stuff, and it never makes a sound. I'm gonna make a bold statement here because I have a favorite machine that I've had for a long time. This desktop tops my experience with what I would have considered the best Apple desktop, and that was the iMac Pro. The M2 Pro Mac Mini is quite an amazing desktop and it fits perfect within my workflow, and it brings me to my conclusion. What's good about this machine? Again, back to the fans. I've never heard them. I can honestly say that I have no idea what they even sound like. It's extremely lightweight, despite it being a powerful desktop. You could easily travel with this machine if you needed to. The machine is affordable, which is weird to say about an Apple device, but it is. And if you wait for it to hit the refurb store on Apple, it's going to be an even better bang for your dollar. And it's no brainer in my opinion. If it was there, you purchase it at a discount. It's literally brand new. And I mean, this machine is just all encompassing a perfect machine, but it is missing some things. And the bad that I would consider is this, because it's so lightweight, I can't get it to sit straight on my desk. And I find myself straightening it every time I put my desk into the stand mode because it shifts a little bit. Uh, the speaker that comes on the device is just freaking garbage. Uh, it's only designed to play the startup chime and nothing else. So sound quality is very, very poor. I don't know what it is about this tinny thing but it bumps me out every time I turn on my Mac Mini. The speaker's just absolute trash. My closing thoughts. I think ultimately it took some time for an affordable Pro desktop to catch up with what Apple is developing with their silicon revolution, but now we have access to an extraordinary computing experience that is backed by some of some serious, serious power. It's now within reach of independent creatives, small businesses, and like I said, even schools and students. Like this is just opening the door for so many people to do so many cool things. One of the standout features of the M2 Pro Mac Mini is its affordability. It's at just $1,300, it's a steal. And there are frequent discounts available on sites like Amazon, Best Buy, B&H, Adorama, all that. You don't need to go overboard with the upgrades and you can just purchase a freaking baseline one and get one of the best computing experiences that are available. This thing excites me. I hope my excitement is being communicated through video because I am absolutely happy with my purchase here. The 2023, M2 Pro Mac Mini is Apple Silicon for the masses and in my opinion, most definitely the best value in the computer industry as a whole. Uh, there are a lot of great PC computers out there and you can build them out and do all kinds of stuff with them, but this thing 
is just a plug and play solution that comes at a very low entry price. I think it's an amazing computer. Again, like if you're looking at this thing and you're considering purchasing it, uh, get it. You won't be disappointed, I promise you. Uh, in closing, I must disclose, I have nothing to disclose. I purchased this thing with my own hard earned cash because of the support you guys provide uh, by watching these videos and shopping through my links and clicking like and just watching the ads and all that type of stuff. I really appreciate your support. If you're interested in pricing and availability, I'll leave a link in the description to a, di a bunch of different outlets, but I will say continually check Apple's refurb store. I'll leave that link in the description. That is not affiliated. It's just a place where I buy most of my Apple devices because it's such a great deal there. Feel free to leave me a comment down below if you like this machine or what your experience has been. I, re I would be interested in hearing that. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas and I will catch you in the next one.